As you may or may not know, I'm working on a course on the problem of Old Testament violence. It's a big time ethical issue regarding the moral character of God in light of those total kill commands. Sometimes they're called the terror texts in Deuteronomy, Joshua, and Samuel, where God commands the total destruction of whole peoples, people group. And I'm reading today on that, the excellent problem of apparently morally abhorrent divine commands by Wesley Morrison. So this is, uh, I printed it out, but this is from the Blackwell Companion of, to the Problem of Evil by Justin McBrayer and Daniel Howard Schneider. Excellent book, but also very excellent article just sort of summarizing the issue. And Wesley, Wes Morriston, or Wesley Morriston, is one of my favorite atheistic or skeptical philosophers. He's so clear and does a really good job of pressing the theist to come up with alternatives or better solutions for these issues. So I thought today I'd just share one insight that just dawned on me as I'm working through this. And what he asks, what Morriston asks, after sort of canvassing the problem, is he asks the following. Are the reasons stated in the terror text worthy of a perfectly good and loving God? And then prior to that, he asked, did God have morally sufficient reasons for issuing each of the annihilation commands? So I started thinking about these two questions, morally sufficient reasons and would such reasons align with God's moral character? And I started to think, well, you know what? Actually, these two things are interrelated in an important way. Namely, that if you're going to understand the reasons on which God issued the commands, you need to understand God's moral character. So often it's mentioned that God has reasons of holiness, reasons of love, and I would add reasons of justice as well. And it's only by understanding the nature of God in terms of his love, in terms of his, especially his holiness, and especially his justice, only if you really have an adequate understanding of at least those three character traits of the Christian God, are you going to then be able to understand why those reasons may be morally sufficient? That is, if you have a, an imbalanced, impoverished understanding of God's moral character, or you don't bother to really go into what does scripture say about who God is, and his perfect goodness. What does that mean? Then it would be natural actually to conclude, especially based on your moral intuitions about these cases, oh my gosh, there's nothing that could morally justify God in issuing these commands. So either the Bible is mistaken, some people take that route to say the, the Bible's in error, perhaps like the authors of the text, thought that God had issued such a commands and they're just using it maybe in, as a cover or their best understanding of what God issued in the this war that happened where the Israelites wiped out the Canaanites and other people groups. Or you could say God's not perfectly good. These texts are accurate, but they're not perfectly good. Now, if you go the route of there's errors in the text, then you call into question the inspiration of scripture. And that is a major problem because God, again, superintended the authors to write what they wrote. And if the authors, what got into the text is an error, then that means that they weren't inspired by God because God is doesn't fall into error. Now, if you go the other route and you say, well, the, the, the people were mistaken, um, you know, they thought, or, or actually you go the other route and you say, God's not perfectly good. Well, <laughs> you solve the problem, but uh, now you've got a whole host of other problems uh, regarding how you establish uh, the God of Scripture as somehow being morally deficient or not more perfectly morally good. There are people who take that route. I'm not saying it's totally implausible, but you've taken on a whole host of other issues if you go that route. 
The best route, I think, is to take the texts at face value, at least in the sense of this is God really superintended the authors to communicate these total kill commands. Now, whether that historically carried out or not, we're not sure exactly right now. But you can see and make sense of why God would be morally justified in issuing such a command, given God's holy nature, given God's love, and given God's justice. And the overarching thing that I think ties everything together is that these commands were issued as God fulfilling his promise to the Israelites, that is, God as a covenant God was keeping his covenant, his word, to the Israelites, and that makes sense of why he issued them. So I just thought I'd share that little tidbit. I think it was kind of fun to think think about that, and I'm going to be developing it in a lot greater depth. But at least for today, I thought that was an interesting insight. Hope all's well, and we'll talk to you soon.